Me review. So, um, welcome to our podcast. Uh, I'm Benji Wilton, sports editor for the Kirkwood Call. I'm Naomi Thompson, social media editor. And I'm Carter Phillip, opinions writer. So today we are going to be talking about the ever more prevalent in today's society. Um, the meme culture and what makes things funny, what makes memes funny to kids, to everybody. Um, so some of the more recent memes have involved things that are just completely not random, fun. not yeah. funny. They're not funny to somebody they're not, who doesn't know what they're, they're talking about. They're not jokes. They're inside jokes. And people find them funny because they are the only ones who can relate to the joke. Very true. Such as loss. Uh, we will probably be including some links to these. But loss is basically a meme where there are seven lines and these lines are in a formation where they are some lines are taller and some lines are horizontal but you can recognize these if you have seen the picture it's based on a web comic from a couple years ago where some cartoonist made a comic that was very serious about miscarriage originally he made comics <laughs> that were Sounds bad. Um, no. Lighthearted, and, lighthearted funny, and funny. Lighthearted and funny, but then he, he made a comment, like a, uh, um, a comic about miscarriage, and now people have been memeing it and putting the lines used in his cartoon as like what. There's been lost memes of water bottles. There's been lost memes where people will draw them with on and, crafts, on crafts, on with chalk, literally anything. And it's a inside joke among a specific group who knows about loss and the history of how loss came to be and so i think that's what makes loss funny but to anyone who hasn't been acquainted with loss itself the meme mm -hmm. and it it picked up more traction it was initially funny because you could boil down every single one of his they were um like a uh, storyboard, you know, the kind of like cartoon action or the um, comic book kind of things where yeah. it was a scene, a scene, a scene. And the joke is that you can boil down each one of the scenes to a line. So each scene is a person, which is like the subject of the scene, and it can be boiled down to a line. So the at first it was funny because it was he was doing these super lighthearted things, and then out of nowhere he hits you with this miscarriage scene. And then people took it, and they made the people in the miscarriage meme lines. And it was kind of funny, whatever. But then almost like a reverb off of that initial joke was that people wouldn't get it. Yeah. They wouldn't get lost, they which were say. like a certain assortment of lines. And it would make it somewhat funnier because you knew. Like it would make you laugh, but it wouldn't make other people laugh. It's the same sort of, it's like a shared concept with um, a bunch of, it's, it's, like a, it's like an inside joke, basically. So today we're, what we hope to do is we hope to shed light to a few like memes meme origins really what yeah. what makes it funny and then the reverb like why is it funnier now that nobody knows so another thing is when people don't understand memes on like instagram or reddit or some kind of platform like they say is is this loss because they don't understand what loss is it is such an abstract so loss has been like the poster child of every meme that is not mainstream or yeah. like that isn't known so yeah loss. yeah and for everybody who doesn't know the life cycle of a meme uh, most often, and when I say most often, I'm talking 95% of the time, a meme will start in some subreddit. Right. Uh, yep. From subreddit, it'll gain traction, and it'll become, like, it'll be used in the media. You'll see it in Instagram. Instagram's like, the big mainstream. Yeah, where once it hits a, Instagram, the inside joke of Reddit dwellers is gone. Yeah, it's mainstream yeah. when it hits Instagram. And then they lose <laughs> respect for the thing they created because they're like, all these normies are... Stealing what we've created and turning it into their own thing that w we didn't intend it to become. So that's what kills memes. And then the people who normalized it stop using it as well because they're like, okay, I need something new. So if everyone knows your inside joke, it's not an inside joke anymore. Yes. And that kind of kills part yeah. of the humor of it. So thus, thus brings the end of the cycle of a meme. Once everybody knows it, it's become normalized and it's not funny anymore.
it's not an inside joke because something's only funny for so long, which is like the basic premise of everything. Yeah. But it kind of again it gains traction again when you know that you're the only person who's um, there. You're a part of a select few who know the meaning behind the meme. So like a few in recent memory. Uh, right now at the time of recording it, Sans is massive. Sans. So basically, there's this game called there's a game called Undertale came out three years ago. It was pretty popular and developed a pretty big fan base. But for some reason, in 2018, there has been a trend of including one of the soundtracks, the first note of this last soundtrack, in one of the last soundtracks in the game called Megalovania. They'll include the first note in random videos that are like kind of unexpected, and it's supposed to draw a somewhat of a chuckle, but it's not funny to someone who doesn't know it. Um, I recently was with a group of friends and I started playing Megalovania on the piano and there was one person who started bursting out laughing and that was Carter actually and uh, nobody else got the joke because nobody else understood the inside joke of Sans and why it's funny. Yeah, so it's a super obscure like third party game developed by one guy and the, um, the, it also, when it was made, it received a lot of um, praise for its soundtrack. It had an 8-bit soundtrack, so it wasn't anything like orchestral or like that, but it was um, the simple like Super Mario Bros. kind of stuff. Um, and at the end, when you're fighting Sans, Sans is the name, every boss in that game has the name of a font. So there's Sans, Papyrus, stuff like that. Uh, Sans is like the final guy. He's the character. He's kind of, he's sort of the antagonist, depending on how you play the game. Not important. Anyway, he's a big part of the story. And when you fight him, you either kill him or you spare him. And it's like this big emotional culmination of all this time spent playing the game and everything. And... Uh, uh, three years later, they take the soundtrack from the boss fight. People who may or may not have played the game. Yeah, and they just put it over random things. And it's so, like, to somebody who's played Undertale or to somebody who knows it, it's kind of funny because, like, you have an emotional tie to that boss fight, to that soundtrack, just mm -hmm. like you would to, like, a song that you used to listen to you lis used to listen to when you were young. So hearing that kind of inspires something, and then when you play it over something that isn't necessarily, like, really heavy, it ca it's funny. And um, But then you get into the even deeper thing of if you sit in a room full of people and you start playing a song and somebody starts laughing, well, that, 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 that's an inside joke, right? So that, that's where the meme that's big right now, that's why it's big right now. And then things will spawn off from this inside joke. So like Sans, instead of the music now, the actual character Sans is now being used. Or like um, an example is in geometry, and a way to, pr uh, way to prove congruency is side angle side. And I saw a video of somebody simply putting an N uh, and uh, side angle side to make it side angle N or S A N S, sans. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it made me laugh. It made me laugh really hard. And it's something that really isn't that funny. So it's, again, of the nature of an inside joke. I feel like part of like making memes funny by inside joke is when it catches you off guard. Like right. when, when Benji played that and I didn't recognize it, I was like, oh, nice, like a little tune. But then for someone who's like, whoa, this jogs memory, off guard, funny spontaneous moment um yeah so the history brief history of memes 10 years ago memes were about as primitive and simple as you could get it would be a picture usually an awkward high school picture like you know the bad awkward luck, dude bad, yeah. bad luck brian grumpy cat just oh, literally yeah. a cat that looked kind of grumpy uh you had like keyboard cat keyboard and then you had cat. the viral youtube videos the and viral stuff. youtube videos nyan cat that were just so random where's the chapstick girl yeah but now i feel like it's evolved into like it's throwback things i'm, I'm not sure comments. if they've devolved devolved or evolved Very because true. so yeah sometimes you can even find that the old memes which are characterized by a picture with impact text at the top and bottom, and oh, the impact yeah. is the font. And so it's like, some really yeah. bad quality yeah. photo, like, which is what makes it funny, yeah. because it's so bad it's of quality. Like, but those are more like mom Facebook memes. Oh, and yeah. Teenagers and all really all people have taken these and crafted them into their own like inside jokes and just things that are don't have a typical... They're not, a, they're not jokes, they're... Just things that are supposed to draw a chuckle or a reaction, such as um, Thanos' car. Recently, uh, the new Avengers movie came out, and Thanos was the villain. He was did a lot of killing. It's not gonna spoil, but 
Um, and people saw a car that was purple and it had a, <laughs> a bumper front, that... front bumper that had some ridges and Thanos' chin has some ridges, so they called it Thanos car. And people would put pictures of it, Thanos car, Thanos car. Just the boat. You had you could not have just Thanos car. You would need two Thanos cars. Thanos car, Thanos car, and that would somehow draw a laugh or something. Yeah. So half of the joke is that like the Thanos has this really goofy looking character in it, or model where he's like yeah. he's got this I mean like big ass head with like yeah. a weird chin. He has a weird chin with ridges. Yeah. And like um, there's also Thanos shoe. Yeah, so, and he's purple. Like, he's bright purple. So it's kind of, like, goofy looking when you're not, like, taking him seriously. And so half the joke is that this car has similar qualities to Thanos, but half the joke is also a callback to, like, the old Impact Text memes. I don't even say memes anymore, because I, I, that's really not yeah. what it is. It's like Images. the, yeah. <laughs> they, they were barely qualified as memes because they were so awkward and, like, cringeworthy that you couldn't really get a laugh yeah. out of them. So the format to, like, the old, like, quote-unquote memes is that the top bar of impact text was setting up, like, the joke, and then the bottom text was most often the punchline or, like, something you could relate to. Um, so the joke here is that it's Thanos car at the top and Thanos car at the bottom. So the joke, the setup, and the punchline are the exact same. The car looks like Thanos. So the uh, it's then kind of a callback to somebody who understands what impact text is. Again, another inside joke inside of an inside joke, which right. creates like layers in this kind of, I guess you would say, normie culture. People who yeah. aren't as educated on the nature of like new, fresh jokes, memes, ideas, stuff like that. So it's really an interesting idea that like you can have an inside joke inside of an inside joke, and it even right. goes deeper than that in other situations. Uh, like the, the like Fortnite is a fantastic yeah. example of like different levels yes. of mainstream yeah humor. mainstream meme like the like the default dance meme the default and dance. like uh, you got like like uh, ninjas memes and ninjas, stuff yeah. like that um, the, the we like Fortnite yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are uh, there's so many different layers into which you can get into like where it is an inside joke and what people it's going to apply to. And it's kind of, it's really an interesting thing to talk about. It's, it's interesting when a meme comes out and then it becomes like, or when you see people talking about it. Because there's this brief period of time in every meme where everybody's in on the joke, but they still think it's an inside joke. Oh, and yeah. that's where, it, like, it's peaked. It's yeah. going downhill from here. So, um, I don't, some memes also never hit that. So, like, I doubt that Sans, the Sans meme will ever hit, like, the peak thing. Yeah, Lost never really hit the peak. Lost no, never hit the it peak. It was way underground, and that's what was funny, because... It keeps yeah. a selective group. I feel like memes are very the opposite of like when you know you have a band and it's like I listen to them first. Memes are like you you want to be the first one, but you also don't want everyone to listen to it after yeah. you yeah. listen to it first. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of nice. It's like a feeling of elitism when you know why something's funny and somebody else doesn't. Yeah. And yeah. they are kind of confidence boosters in a way because if you recognize a meme and you find other people who like that memes, like hey. I did something good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's pretty good. The, uh, the, an example of, like, a good example of something that peaked, it was, like, at the forefront of media. Like, even getting news coverage as earlier at the beginning of this year, 2018, was the Tide Pods. Uh, this started, I, uh, this started in a Reddit sub, uh, yeah. in a subreddit, where somebody uh, just casually made a joke saying that they found this candy in their mom's laundry room and it was a Tide Pod. And, and it, like and everyone knew, you don't eat Tide Pods. Yeah, yeah like, like Tide Pods, well in case you don't know, it's a package of laundry detergent. It's a single-use packet that yeah, has so. red or orange and blue colors that looks like candy and has white. It's like looks like a gummy candy. Yeah. So people would make jokes like, oh my god, Tide Pods, the forbidden fruit. They are yeah. so good. Such a snack. Like... <laughs> And All this stuff. There started a Tide Pod challenge, which gained news coverage because, yeah, obviously, when people eat Tide Pods, they're gonna go to the hospital. Cause <laughs> so, because Tide Pods have chemicals and bleach in them, so people would eat them. Tide Pod challenge. They would like pop the the packet, and then this would get news coverage because people were like going to the hospital, and I don't know if anyone died, but. Possibly. And, and that's when Tide Pods became the dead meme. It, it went from, oh, this is funny, like, haha, snacks, to, like, oh, people are actually, like, that dumb. Yeah. And the news is getting involved, and now it's all over Facebook. Hey, don't eat Tide Pods. It's like, yeah. all along we knew, don't eat bleach. Yeah. 
Like we've been, yeah. Uh, and another thing, like it doesn't always have to be like a meme isn't always just a joke at no one's expense. Quite often, actually, a meme can be making fun of something or someone, right? And that's where it can get like, well, I'm, I want to say destructive, but like it's almost funnier in a way. But like it, it's it's this it's is where you it delve gives into you the, the, the confidence. Ed. Yeah, so, like you're like stepping on them, like directly. Like there's this musically was this app where oh, people yeah. would lip sync to videos like sound files or just like songs and recently it's been given a new life with TikTok which is the company that bought Musical.ly for like a billion or some kind of sum of money and TikTok like people are still making these lip sync videos like serious but people to like rain on their parade and to like make themselves feel better they've been starting to make fun of their TikToks so if someone is singing a song uh, you can do duets on TikTok where there'll be a side-by-side -side video clip where you can like l listen you can make a video with the same audio as they're using so people will like start punching their phone to look like they're punching the camera people will jump on the camera people will start eating food um, like, start dancing yeah. really poorly to for like to make a joke or if the if the, some TikToks have like a military reference <laughs> And the person will be dressed up in a military costume, so everyone will be saluting them. And sometimes it's slapstick too, sometimes like somebody just jumps out of a window or jumps down a flight yeah. of stairs, or just something that's like it's just like this. The because um, slapstick's never not funny. Like it's just unexpected; right. you never saw it coming. But yeah, most often the guy, the panel on like the left is making fun of the panel on the right. So that's like the formula you could say for the meme is the yeah. the. Um, the right is like some person trying, like actively trying to make, like I guess a, a creative right. piece of work, and the guy on the or uh, yeah, this guy on the right, the guy on the left, left is, is just making tearing yeah. it to shreds. Yeah, and that's that's what's funny. And it's funny, but it's um, th this isn't like a great example. This is like a kind of Vine esque situation where oh, you yeah. watch it for the punchline. It's not necessarily an inside joke. So not like not every single meme to come to town is going to be an inside joke. Some of them are funny because of other elements of comedy, like slapstick or. Like, just like a, a classic joke, like making fun of somebody for the sake of making fun of somebody is not always going to be an inside joke, but it will most often be funny. Um, there are other previous examples, like uh, when the um, Kylo Ren in the Star Wars movie, right. he, uh, he had a scene where he appeared shirtless. Um, this was very, very, um, I guess you could say funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it received a lot of uh, attention. In the in the community of Reddit, I know I don't know if it ever got that much into Instagram. I can't remember. I, yeah. Um, the one that's hitting Instagram right now, mainstream, is like the made by. Yeah, this, imagine this, post, this made by this other post gang. This was made by. Yeah. And originally, <laughs> um, it's just like a thing where I don't know, you guys know how to explain it. Yeah. So in it, this is like this is the pinnacle of an inside joke. This is like everything that we have been talking about. This is it. When in Call of Duty Zombies, in the starting room are your weakest weapons. So like the worst guns you can use to kill zombies, right? So in theory, you would never buy them. It's like so the you would never buy them. You would always so wait till you get waste. yeah. They're a waste of your points, which is what you use to buy stuff. The two guns that you have a choice of are the M14 and the Olympia. So they're both terrible guns. Like, that's what I have to stress. Both so bad. You should never pick up either one of them. Well, within the Call of Duty Zombies subreddit, there was a joke that where the M14, they were called the M14 gang, were making fun of the Olympia gang. Both terrible guns, mind you. So, like, everybody can agree that both guns are bad. But one was making fun of the other. So they would make jokes. Like, the Olympia is slightly better at yeah. doing dog rounds, which is where a dog ambushes you and whatever. It doesn't matter. And the M14 has a better ammo capacity, and it has more ammo. Um, it has better reload speed, stuff like that. So what happened was these posts started getting made where it was like, oh, yeah, but Olympia be smacking in dog rounds, though. This post was made by M14 gang. So the joke is two bad ideas or two irrelevant yeah. ideas are fighting. Yeah, it's this formula is just two things that aren't even at conflict with each other. Like apples and oranges. oranges. Books like, and Kindles. Yeah. yeah. This po imagine having to charge your book. This po book was made this post was made by Real Book Gang. Yeah. It's like this like, imagine having to peel your 
your fruit before eating it. This like, yeah, post this was made by like Apple, Apple Gang. Gang. Yeah, so it's like things that you don't even like compare because yeah. they're so like it's their just, their you take it. Spheres. It's no conflict and yeah. So yeah. now it's been taken out of context where originally those memes were super exclusive. Like only if you played Call of Duty Zombies in like Call of Duty Black Ops Two would you get it. But now it's, like, been opened up. The meme formula has been opened up. Because it's still funny. Like, it's still funny to watch two useless ideas fight. Um, or not useless, but, like, non... Like, ideas that don't need to fight, that are fighting. So, like, that's a great current example of a mm -hmm. meme that may hit it big. I, it's a yeah. lottery, really. Some of them hit it big. Some of them don't. Yeah. Uh, another big one you've been seeing is Kowalski analysis. This is just oh, yeah. when something questionable happens. And from the Penguins of Madagascar... Uh, Kowalski was the, um, the, the, the smart one. yeah the smart one, and he would be instructed to analyze things. So yeah. like um, another format that it, memes basically most of, they most of the time memes follow formulas. It's almost like an equation. Yeah. So you plug different things in to solve the equation and make the joke. Like recently, there's this uh, there's an app called Fiverr, or it's a service called Fiverr where you can pay someone to make a video for you, make a logo for you, or really just perform a service. For and $5. For $5 or more. And recently, this guy named VoiceOver Pete, he has been paid a lot of money to say, attention all gamers, blank, all we need is your credit card number, the three numbers in the back, and the expiration month and year, blank. So... If pe people keep submitting those for different video games and for different reasons to make the same joke and put it on a different background, because the guy makes the video in front of a green screen, so you can put anything behind it, it's a perfect way to make money for him because he just boosted his price up to 50 bucks. Yeah. So now he's making... It's kind of insane. Yeah, he's raking in the dough, and these people keep paying for it because they just want to get these things get views on the internet, and they want to attract more people to their sites and their profiles. So. Yeah. So the the base yeah the basis of the joke there is that like you could literally insert anything. So like a great example is like Fortnite. Like John Wick, who's yeah. a character in Fortnite, needs your help. Like this is obviously candering or um, pandering to like a like a, a group yeah, of people. Yeah, it's, it's making the joke that kids will give away their credit card number. So yeah. It's like all we need is your credit card number. Yeah, so like kids, I, I think the joke spawned, and I'm not 100% sure, so I can't speak, but the idea, like as I come to understand it, is that Fortnite's a free game with microtransactions, which means you can buy stuff in the game. So the game's free, but you can buy stuff in the game. Um, and kids are the main demographic of Fortnite. So uh, kids take their parents' credit card, and they spend money on the game without their parents' permission. So... This guy was paid to make this um, ad where he says, attention all Fortnite gamers. John Wick, a character in Fortnite, needs your help. Helping him is simple. All I need is the credit card number, expiration date, and CVV on the back. And then, like, it's just, I don't know. It's just like a, a, a stupid joke that became a formula. Yeah. And now they're using it for any number of different ideas. So, like, Garfield Racing is yeah. one. or So, like, just, just stupid non-related things that are funny because of the original idea that kids will spend, like, take their parents' credit cards and spend money. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. so once, once your meme, basically, I guess, to sum it all up, once your meme resonates with people, whether it's a small or, well, more, more so when it's a small group of people and it becomes an inside joke, I feel like that's when one really strikes at humor. Yeah. But then as, as it grows larger, I guess you can share the humor with other people, but um, yeah. Kind of connecting back to our publication, um, Naomi actually made a video last year where she had teachers recreate Vines, and Vine, Correct. for this generation, is one of their fondest memories of laughs and inside jokes. And when people see, this video is up to like 40,000 views or something, and when people see these... Um, mainstream vines, mainstream these vines, super popular. These be super popular, and, and say teachers recreating teachers. them, they say, oh, that's super funny. I love that, because they relate to it. And it's an inside joke that they relate to, even though it's a big inside joke. But, yeah. Um, basically, just you capture people's, like, you strike a a note in their mind that brings them back to something they remember or that they can relate to. Pretty much. Yeah. So I think that sums it up, what makes it right. funny for today's podcast. Um, thank you guys for listening. Um, 
If you want, check out our website for any other podcasts, videos, stories, and other web content. Um, we will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to the Kirkwood Call on YouTube. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs>